Nightmare County. I'm your host, Rando M. Gould. And it, while it has been a while since my last video, I do want to tell you I appreciate you for tuning in for this video. Uh, it's been over a month since my last video. I have been trying to make... I've made three different videos, and almost every single one of them have turned out really bad because I have had... Um, I got a cold flu. I think I got the cold slash flu. And I had a... No matter what I try to do, I try to make a video, I just start coughing like uncontrollably after a certain while. But I'm feeling a lot better now, so I decided to go ahead and get a video out there. And while my um, golden age of kids sport flicks is still going to be, I'm probably going to get that out sometime this week, or by this weekend, by Sunday at least, uh, I wanted to get another video out there and um, for all of you to watch and see. Uh, this is going to be another music uh, related video and I will also be starting a secondary channel where it will be only focused on um, music. So I will be taking everything from this YouTube channel, Nightmare County, and putting it to another one. And I will uh, create a new Instagram social media accounts for that, uh, that account as well. But, Nightmare Account will still be the main one, but this the, the other YouTube channel that which will focus only on music because I know some people don't want to come here for movies and everything, so it'll be a secondary channel where we're we'll only focus on music. And what I have here today is um, a friend sent me uh, a box full of vinyl records. Uh, there's supposed to be ten records in here. Um, I have no idea what's going to be in this. All I was told was is that be prepared for some new wave 80s uh, genre of music. Post pump, uh, new wave music and everything. So I'm really looking forward to getting into this. Uh, I guess after a few of my other videos of me doing mainly uh, new wave cassette tapes and stuff like mystery boxes, uh, openings and stuff like that. Uh, my friend, he sent me this, told me that I'm probably not going to know any of these records or any of these bands because these are stuff you usually find in the, uh, the dollar bins or the, the budget bins at your stores and stuff. But um, he had these lying around. He wasn't listening to them. He thought that I would enjoy them. So, Dean, thank you. And let's get into this. As you can see, a hefty box. So, let's get into this. And I should have probably cut this beforehand, but who knows, right? I don't think it matters. But yeah, um, I thought it would be a good idea to start a secondary channel where I focus mainly on music, since it seems like here lately, I'm having a hard time enjoying a lot of the new movies that are coming out. There are movies I'm looking forward to going to see, but are, and talking about older movies, um, but I've been really, I've been in a really big, heavy. Uh, I've just been in a music mood where I just, I want to go see bands, perform live, especially older bands that, are, that, that probably are fixing to stop touring and everything. And uh, just, I've enjoyed listening to the, the music, uh, just everything that I can get my, uh, put in my ears, <laughs> in my brain, in order for me to listen to. Um, that being said. Being a new, I guess I, I, I consider myself a, a, a new fan of new wave and post punk music. Whereas used to, I had to, I only preferred heavy metal music, uh, thrash, and uh, everything. I mean, I listened to glam metal stuff from the 80s, uh, a lot of 70s and 60s and 50s uh, rock and roll and everything, hard rock. But uh, if it wasn't heavy metal, I didn't really care. Um, I was kind of ignorant with it when it came to or when it came to music and everything uh, when I was young even though I heard all this music when I was a kid through my mom when she played the radio or whatever was playing the radio and everything and um, from you know, being born in the early 80s being raised in the 80s so I got to hear it all I remember a good bit of it it's being around my mom my uncle my everybody else and everything what was played on the radio so um, especially when you know we finally got cable or satellite and I was able to watch uh, VH1 and MTV. Of course, MTV at that point 
by the time we had it was in the grunge phase and uh, in the hip hop phase of the uh, of the early 90s, uh, mid 90s and stuff. New metal hadn't came around just yet, and um, so video that's the only kind of time videos were being played. I was looking, but I would watch VH1 for older music videos, especially like uh, pop up video, which played a lot of the old 80s. Uh, new wave bands and stuff like that, or synth pop bands of that era, and that's my, that was my exposure. And I started to become more of a fan of that music, even though I wasn't a big fan of it then. It wouldn't be to here the past couple of years where I really just started falling in love with new wave and post punk music, synth pop, also to be thrown in there. So, that being said, let's get into this. Here we go. This is probably the best put together box I have seen. Okay, so like I said, these are vinyl records. I am probably not going to know half of these bands, as I've been told. But here we go. First up is a band called Combo Audio. And I can honestly say I've never heard of this band before. I and it's hard for me to say anything about a band that I've never really listened to before. So what I'll probably end up doing is I'll go over some of these uh, records on the new channel and I'll review them. And I'll probably try to review a record a day uh, for like artists you might not have never heard of. Or they might have had a minor hit and the world just kind of forgot about them. But I love finding uh, new bands to listen to special ones the world's forgotten about or ones you can't even find on Spotify you have to go to YouTube and sometimes people have posted the, uh, the entire record on uh, YouTube and everything and I appreciate it when people do that because there are a lot of great bands that almost made it but didn't quite make it and you never know this band might be it so I look forward to listening to this and finding out what Combo Audio is all about and this is only a um, and there's only four songs in this entire record, so we'll, we'll find, uh, we'll to it and find out. So, first up, Combo Audio. Ah, now, I know who this band is. This is the Ward Brothers. And the reason why I know who, or know who the Ward Brothers are is because they have a song in Mommy Vice, and I'm a big fan of Mommy Vice. It's probably one of my top three shows I love to watch. From as a kid, and I just for nostalgia, I still watch it whenever, whenever I can. Um, they had a, uh, I think the song that was on, yeah, the song that was on Miami Wise was Cross the Bridge, which is on this album. Because, um, and when I went, I was trying to make a playlist of all the music from Miami Vice, that's how I know. Um, and I look up all the bands from the Miami Vice uh, soundtracks, or when what, what song was played in the, in the, the series. And it came across the Ward Brothers, and they only released like two albums. They released this one, and they released an album in the 90s. And I've listened to this entire album already on YouTube, like I was saying earlier. So I actually am ecstatic. I really am excited about having this record, because I listened to the entire album on YouTube and loved it. And you can't, and you can't find it anywhere else. I don't think it's on Spotify. But this is a great band. They only released two albums, and this one, uh, I say Cross That Bridge is probably the best song, Now it, it was probably one of the best songs on this album, but I would say Madness of It All, and I would, man, I would say, um, Why Do You Run is, there's some really great, uh, songs on here. If you get a chance, you can go on YouTube and check out this band, The Ward Brothers, uh, there's some great tracks on here, especially if you like uh, the synth pop. If you like Miami, the music was played in Miami Vice. I'll say it like that. Make make it a little bit easier. You're gonna love this. I would definitely the Ward Brothers. Definitely check that out. I'm glad to have this record. This is awesome. Um, up next, World at a Glance. I don't know this band. Um, you're going to probably hear that a lot, me going through this. I don't know anything from it. I'm looking at the producers. I don't know. Like I said, you know, the band probably like Combo Audio. Uh, I'll 
listen to them, check them out, see, see if I like them, and I'll review them later on. But yeah, World at a Glance, featuring the song Burning Out that I haven't heard. But we'll find out. Now, oh, okay, now I've seen this movie. This is playing for keeps. I've seen this movie. Uh, I love watching uh, movies from the 80s and stuff, of course. This has... Uh, oh, dude. Anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll go to that one here in a second. Um, Playing for Keeps is a, uh, is a fun, uh, pretty fun movie to watch. Uh, the soundtrack, I, I don't remember the soundtrack from the movie, so this will be fun to listen to. I do know that the soundtrack has... Chris Thompson on it, who I, this music I really enjoy. It's got Pete Townsend, Peter Frampton, Eugene Wilde, Hinton Battle, Phil Collins, We Said Hello Goodbye, and I know for a fact this is the remix version of the song, which is slightly different than the one that got played on radio. Um, Sister Sledge, Arcadia, of course, Joe Cruz, and Julia, Julian Lennon. Uh, it's actually, I mean, it's got a solid uh sound solid soundtrack um totally worth uh checking out the movie i wouldn't say is it was directed and produced and it was i think it was directed and produced by the uh weinstein brothers uh bob and harvey who we all know and don't like anymore from the things that they've done um but I don't know. I mean, it's still the soundtrack, though. Um, I'm glad I didn't pay for it. I guess it's it's kind of it's kind of sucks because you know you want to support the band you like, but you know that you know at the time that you know they didn't know about those people what they were doing. So I know it's stupid, but uh, glad to have the soundtrack. Uh, it's got a lot of great bands on it and everything. So uh, I'll be listening to this. I'll, I'll give. I guess I can give a review about review on it later on. Um, probably review the movie as well. I think you can find it like on uh, YouTube. I think the full movie is on YouTube. Now, earlier, I saw this when I picked another record up. This is a dude and his music that I enjoy, incredibly enjoy. Um, and that's Chris Thompson. Uh, this is, I enjoy his music. This is the high cost of living. Um, and also, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a sucker for records that have artwork or abstract artwork or anything like that. Like that's why I like Genesis records, or uh, that's why I like Kiss because they always had incredible artwork on their albums and everything. Uh, if I were to saw this album, I probably just bought it off the artwork alone. But um, I like Chris Thompson a lot. The love and loneliness is. I really enjoy it. So it's 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 a really great song. He kind of falls into, he's new wave, but also like more, you know, synth pop and everything. Uh, this music is a lot of fun. It's enjoyable. There's, I can't say anything bad about it. It's just, it's, he, he just makes enjoyable music. And I would say it's definitely worth checking out. If you ever get a chance, I'm glad to have, I have, finally have this record on vinyl. Because I have only heard it on YouTube. It's one of these bands that I found and... Actually, I found uh, Chris Thompson. Uh, I was looking up uh, the Ward Brothers from Miami Vice when I was looking them up on uh, found them on YouTube. It showed up in one of the, uh, the categories at the bottom of other records, you know, other artists in their albums in full that's on YouTube, and that's how I ended up finding Chris Thompson. So yeah, great record, a lot of fun. I'll review it probably and go full review on it later on. Okay, I know who this band is. Limited Warranty. Another band, just like Chris Thompson and the War Brothers, I found by chance by it being on the uh, on YouTube and one of the other videos to click on and everything. Uh, if you like, oh, man, what would be a good comparison to compare Limited Warranty to? Um, man, I, it's, they're just one of, those, one of those other bands from the new wave synth pop era. Uh, if you enjoy that type, if you you have to like that type of music. Um, if you enjoyed uh, some light, I would say Genesis, maybe Phil Collins type music. Um, man, that's maybe that, that's too high praise in my opinion. That's because 
I hold Genesis and Phil Collins way up there. But let's this, this is go new wave uh, music and synth pop. If you just enjoy that type of music, you'll definitely enjoy Limited Warranty. Another band with uh, they could have almost made it, but didn't quite make it, you know. Uh, but still, enjoyable record. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. I believe you you won't be able, you won't find it on Spotify at all. And that's what's uh, that's, I'm happy that people are going out of their way to put an entire album for people to find on YouTube. And you go in there and you look at the comments, and there's a lot of people who enjoy these bands, and they they feel the same way I do about it. it, it, it's, it that's the music business, you know, how it eats, it chews them up, and spits them out. There's so many great bands that just didn't get the uh, exposure that they needed and everything. This is one of those bands. All right. Now, this is a band I do know. Uh, in fact, if you comment on the music video for a Telegram song and some of the others, the uh, lead singer of the, this band will comment back as well. So, uh, was it? Yeah, I think it's Dave, Dave Adams. He, and he, he'll comment and everything. Um, this band is Glass Moon. I hate that this has the sticker on the front because I know that if I try to take that off, this is going to pull all the, uh, the artwork up or just leave that white film on there from behind the uh, label, the sticker. It sucks because I would love to have this just for the artwork alone. I know this band. Um, I came across a song, the Telegram song, a long time ago. And it's one of my highly enjoy. It's one of the songs I listen to every once in a while. It's got a lyric in it that I really enjoy. Uh, well, it makes you think and everything. Um, I don't know what you would classify Glass Moon as when it comes to music. Maybe just post punk, maybe. Godly, I don't know. Soft rock, post punk. Um, I don't know. I, I'd have to. But I would like to, um, you, can find the, you can find Glass Moon on Spotify, and of course, full album on uh, their music videos on uh, YouTube. But I'll, I'll probably re- listen to this album, review it, and talk about it because they have a few tracks that I absolutely love. One being the, uh, the Telegram song and She Was Magic. Those are two, two great songs from this album. But I'll definitely probably talk about this album later on. A lot of fun. All right, now I only know one song by this band. This is the Lost Tropics. As you can tell, this as you, as you can tell, this was found in the 99 cent bin. So, but it's a female fronted uh, post punk uh, new wave band that had one song from a movie that I absolutely love. That's Night of the Creeps, and that's the uh, Too Much to Handle. I know. I am a die-hard Fred Decker uh, fan, and uh, his two movies, Night of the Creeps and Monster Squad, are their movies I have I watched along with Army of Darkness and Evil Dead movies over and over and over and over and over and over again. That I would I sought out like what songs I could if I hear, heard a song I do everything I could seek it out, and I was happy to find that the, uh, this band. Uh, too much to handle was in Night of the Creeps and everything. And I know this. I, I kind of knew that as soon as I saw this, what what song they had. I have not really listened to the rest of the other songs on the album. I've only heard Too Much to Handle. But so I look forward to listening to this. I do know a little bit. I knew a little bit about the band. I think this is the only album ever released. So I look forward to hearing it. And um, yeah, I just know that. Uh, I've seen the album cover on, on online because when you look up, I think if you look it up uh, on YouTube, it shows the album cover and then it shows the uh, Night of the Creeps uh, poster beside each other. And uh, that's where I found it uh, too much to handle and everything. But I look forward to listening to the rest of this album. Uh, fun band from that one song that I've heard, and I'm hoping the rest of this music is uh, just as good. I have a feeling it will be. So. Lost Tropics. I already know what the name of the album is. The self-title. Alright. Alright. And next up is Tom Dickey and the Desires. Another 99 cent bargain bin album. The 11th Hour. And 
I don't know anything about this band. So I'm really looking forward to, well, everybody in the band plays synthesizers, so for the uh, drummer. Anyways, uh, look forward to listening to this band. I don't know anything about them, like I said. I don't know. What do you think? I like the album. I like the artwork. You know, it's a little bit, I guess it's a little bit different. So yeah, Tom Dickey and the uh, and the Desire. So we we'll checking that out and uh, give a review of it later on as well. All right, we're down to the last album, and this is one two one. Forward your emotions. I know a little bit about this band. I think they had a minor hit off of this album. I think I think it was. Uh, Hearts and Diamonds, Range of My Pocket. It's one of those. I think, or it might be Forge Your Emotions. Anyways, uh, I know a little bit about this band. I've heard a few of their songs. Um, you can't, you won't find anything on Spotify about them. But this was another band that I found through looking up songs from Miami Vice, and found uh, when I found the War Brothers. This was another album that I found at the uh, played in full on the. Uh, on YouTube and everything and I just sit around and I just listen to one after the other I don't know a lot about this album uh, I mean I do but I don't because I remember listening to it but I don't remember listening uh, if I really liked everything that I heard everything but uh, I'll give it a listen to maybe I will um, I did like I did like one of the songs so we'll find out um, like I said I know hearts and diamonds more than anything, I think it's the one track that I really did like, or one that stood out the most. So, yeah, so this is one to one, and we'll find out if it's a solid record or not. Maybe it won't, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Usually, most of the time, when you find these albums in the bargain bin, they were not that big. They, they might have had a, a small hit off of the album, but they were not a big hit overall. And usually, the bands they just dropped right after that. Usually, it's that last album that they just dropped off the face of the earth that ends up in the bargain bin. So yeah, going back over, we have one, two more. With Four Your Emotions, Time to Kin and Desires with the 11th Hour. I do like the artwork on that one. The Lost Tropics. Fun band, let's search that one track. Hope the rest of the album is good. Like I said, Hit Glass Moon. A band that I've actually listened to a few times, especially with the Telegram song, Limited Warranty. Probably this would probably this along with the Ward Brothers would be my two favorite albums off of the uh, out of this entire bundle. This uh, lot that I got, Chris Thompson with uh, the High Cost of Living, probably be my favorite. Album of this. We have Plan for Keeps with several artists that are all pretty good. World at a Glance, an album I haven't, I don't know anything really about, so I'm looking forward to listening to this. So, World at a Glance. And between this and Chris Thompson, this, these two are, this was with that, these, these, those two, these two records are going to be my two, fa my, my favorites out of this box. Without a doubt. I, I really enjoyed the Word Brothers. I think most people, most other people would as well. So yeah, these two records definitely going to be my favorites out of this. And we have some singles from Combo Audio, who I know nothing about. So look forward to checking them out. Uh, this is a mini LP, is what that one is. So yeah, I'll check these out. I'll probably review once a, one a day on the other channel. I know this video is taking up some time and you might have been a little bit bored and that may have made it all the way through, but I hope you did. Uh, I'll probably be doing um, some more unboxings as uh, Dean, he, uh, he, he, seen, he sends me stuff here and there and um, I think he's got a, a, a mix box of records he's going to send me. And I see I, what I do is um, if people are giving records, I usually take them. Um, Especially if they're going to throw them away. I have repaired. I like I like to repair records or 
um, take records that are so dirty that people don't even think about cleaning them and I will take the time and clean them and refine them and everything and do whatever I can to get them playing again it takes a little time uh, several run throughs to clean them all you go through a few needles on your turntable but sometimes you can save records doing that and I enjoy doing that I hate throwing music away um, I, just, I would love to find all my cassette tapes um, of course I've started my if you've noticed on this channel I've started collecting cassette tapes again I've been collecting vinyl records for a while now since I was a kid I didn't even have a record player at the time but um, my first record that I ever had got or ever had the pleasure of ever owning was one that was given to me when I was three years old and that was uh, Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard's Poncho 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 and Lefty golly I can't believe I almost forgot the name of that record that was my, my, they got it for me when I was three years old because I used to cry every time I heard Poncho and Lefty and so they decided that since it made me cry that they would buy it for me for some reason um, but I appreciate it though because I really do I have grown to love that record immensely especially Punch on Lefty of course I do like the uh, the other versions of that song by um was it Van Zant that uh God, I hope I'm right about that I think it's um probably not though but I love Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard's version of uh, Punch on Lefty and um it I guess and I had that record when I was like when I was a kid you know but I was never allowed to play with it or anything until they realized I was able to take care of my music uh, I started collecting music and realized I could take care of things then they allowed me to have a record they got from me when I was very little um, they even marked on it and everything let me know when they bought it for me my grandmother and my grandfather bought it for me um, but the first record that I, I say vinyl record that I bought with my own money was probably Alice Cooper's um, Flush for Fashion, Twisted Sister, uh, Stay Hungry, and Dio's Rainbow in the Dark. And I still own all three of those records. Um, Flush for Fashion is probably not Alice Cooper's best record, but I still enjoyed it, you know. Uh, not as so much as, uh, you know, and I would end up collecting, you know, Killers, um, Billion Dollar Babies, uh, and all the others and everything, but the original Alice Cooper group and stuff. And I haven't, what's funny is I don't own any Alice Cooper record after he went solo. I mean, I, I own stuff on a CD and cassette, but that's about it. Kiss, I own a few records on vinyl, but um, I, I don't, I, I just, I'm kind of sporadic with the way I collect vinyl. Like, like I said, usually I buy stuff from the dollar bins. Um, I kind of, Sometimes I'll look up a band on Google search, you know, Google it or whatever, see if I can find out information about the band. Sometimes you can't at all. Sometimes you have to go to YouTube. What's funny is you go to YouTube and you can find the band in that album, so when uploaded, but you go to Google search and they can't find anything about the band, which is amazing to me, um, which has happened quite a few times. Um, so yeah, I love finding, going to YouTube and finding these bands that people upload. And thank God people are doing stuff like that so people can find these these bands and these artists who made this beautiful music for the world to hear that they didn't get a chance to uh, possibly listen to. Or due to the changing atmosphere of music, had all, uh, always changes. Um, especially movies, music from the late 80s or 90s and the late 90s. Almost every decade, with the way, if there's a change in the music form, people just want to... Even though they enjoyed this music, they they have been enjoying this music for like the past six eight years. They immediately just hate it, and they don't want to listen to or support those bands anymore. And they get mad at the band because the band hasn't changed yet or fast enough. Or if they did change, they didn't like the change they made it into, and so on and so forth. And it's just, I, I guess being someone who just enjoys music, I just enjoy music, and the big changes, I didn't really care for. I just. I would, I always, when I used, I used not to be so open-minded, but when it came, as I got older, as I've gotten older, I've become more open-minded. And it took a metalhead to tell me, you know, it's ignorant to not listen to all kinds of music, because you never know what you're going to miss out on, and what you could affect you emotionally, 
or affect your soul and make you happy or sad, make you realize things you never realized before. And um, because I thought I was a metalhead and that's all I was going to listen to. And then I was told that by someone that I respected and it really, you know, I started listening to all kinds of music after that started realizing I enjoyed the music. I really did enjoy the music that my grandparents listened to, that my mom and dad listened to. And I went out and found my own music that I would end up enjoying and loving even more. As much as I love heavy metal music, um, I probably enjoy a lot of the 80s new wave post-punk music even more than what I do heavy metal music now. There's country music artists that I enjoy more than heavy metal music. Um, because I like the content of what they sing about. No, I'm, I'm not talking about like the beer and losing my girlfriend or whatever type of music. I'm just talking about artists who know how to write a well-made song, lyrically and musically. And it happens. I mean, country music has a lot of it. And they, it's always writing, it's always people who write music that with something you can identify with. And I enjoy that. So I'm hoping I can find a lot of that in this box of records that I've been giving and other boxes that I hope I can, uh, can obtain and everything but um that being said I hope you enjoyed this video I know I have just talked and talked and talked but with not making a video for so long I figured make a long video this time especially with an unboxing and everything I love music and um and I can probably be kind of boring with uh, the way I talk about it but I have a profound love for it and a lot of variations of that music. It seems like all I've been talking about is new wave and music here lately, but that's just where, uh, what I've been collecting and what uh, someone decided to give me. So I want to talk about it. I do know that the next box of records that I get is going to be a plethora of southern rock music, which is a genre that I actually do love. I'll never forget my first southern rock record was black oak arkansas and i hated that record with a profound vengeance <laughs> but um i mean there's uh, they're hot nasty i think is one of the songs i like by black oak arkansas luckily I, I would go on and find other southern rock bands that i really did enjoy like charlie daniels band Atlanta rhythm section leonard skinner of course um marshall tucker band um omar and the howlers and several others, uh, the Outlaws, probably the Outlaws being one of my favorite ones, because uh, their structuring of songs and what, how they jam and everything is just, I think, better than what any band could do today. But um, that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe as I'd greatly appreciate it, and be on the lookout for my all focused music uh, channel where I'm going to do a lot of reviews probably with most of these records that I got uh, uh, today and every other record that I get and I'll always uh, post it to where uh, you can probably find I'll probably make a video talking about the new channel and letting people know about it and everything and don't forget I will have the video about uh, the golden age of uh, sport kids sport flicks I should have that up by Sunday Funny story is, I actually had that video already made, and then while having a coughing fit, I because uh, I was going to edit it all out. I thought that would be, be a good idea. I would edit all the coughing, the pauses, and everything I made, and I started, I started coughing so bad. I leaned, I was coughing, and I leaned down, and I realized that I had, did not, I did not turn my mic on. So I had recorded like a 20-minute video and no sound whatsoever. So that sucked. But um, that being said, I hope, like I said, I've already said this several minutes, several, several times already. I hope you enjoy this video. And uh, like I said, we'll get more videos out, more music reviews, more mu talk about movies, maybe a little bit of video games. Um, also, I'll be, uh, I'll be reviewing live concerts as well. Uh, I think the next concert that I'll be going to will be a Abducted by the 80s concert featuring Wang Chun, Wang Chung, the Motels and Naked Eyes, which is kind of awesome because I don't, Naked Eyes didn't really tour that much during the 80s because they had, because of the uh, structuring of their music and the, uh, the, uh, the instruments they used are the, uh, they used in their music. So, the 
the fact that they're on tour along with all these other bands is kind of awesome. So I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to seeing Wang Chung as I enjoy all four of their uh, records, the the first four records they released with uh, Point of the Curve, uh, To Die, To Live and Die in uh, L.A., which is one of my favorite uh, film noir films, neo noir films. It's a great soundtrack that Wang Chung did for that. And um, Mosaic, that that was the third album, and uh, of course. Uh, I've, I've had um, was it the warmer side of cool a cooler side of warm golly I'm, I hate that I can't remember that right now but the but the first three records are without a doubt um, fantastic uh, by Wang Chu so I'm looking forward to going and seeing them live because it's not you don't, you don't know how long, much longer you got to see some of these bands still perform and tour so I'm looking forward to seeing them as I am all these other bands I'd like to go see. I'm, I try, I'm trying to go see as many uh, 70s and 80s and uh, 90s bands as much as possible before they just call it quits. Because um, you never know. One day they're just, sometimes people pass and they don't tour no more. And uh, I think right now, was it Foreigner? They're on their last uh, farewell tour where they're not going, you know, they're not going to tour anymore. So, if you get a chance to go see some of these bands, you never know, you might have li- you might like them more than you realize. Uh, especially live. Seeing a band live can change everything about a band. Uh, compared to what you hear on, or on the radio, or on CD, or a streaming service, or whatever. Seeing a band live and the energy put into it can change a lot of things. That being said, thank you for watching my video. Don't be a stranger, and tune in. Oh, 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 oh